Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good. I believe that you're experiencing the hand of God in your life. And those who are watching me for the first time, this is Evans Francis from Nagpur, India. I'm an evangelist into full-time ministry from last 13 years. And I believe that uh, that God is blessing you through through this videos and he's speaking to you and he's empowering you. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do subscribe, hit the bell icon. So whenever I come live or share a video or a post, you will be notified. And uh, I believe that many of you have started uh, 30 minutes challenge. And if you haven't, then do uh, watch that video and uh, do share that video. And uh, I believe that something great will happen in your life. And I already received messages that brother, uh, now when that time is there, like now I'm able to know that how much I really prayed and uh, I received messages that uh, I kept my phone aside, everything aside and I prayed 30 minutes. It feels very good. Just imagine when the 30 minutes will turn into three hours, maybe it will take years. Uh, but you know, your life will be totally different. Uh, your attitude will be totally different because every day you are having a time with the Lord. Just praying two minutes is not time with the Lord. And I believe that uh, through that God will spare, God will build you up to become a person He desires you to be. And uh, let us pray. Father God, we come to that presence in this wonderful time. Master, Lord, we come to the throne of grace. I give this word into the hand. Speak to your children. I cancel all the disturbances in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 In today's prophetic time, I will be sharing the, uh, the message titling, Finishing the Race. And uh, it is very important. And I believe that uh, when we uh, are careful, when we have eternity in our mind and everything we do, we know that it is going to impact our eternity. So, you know, we should be very careful about it. And uh, for this message, I have chosen the life of John the Baptist. And I believe that uh, through this message, God will speak to you and he will empower you and he will give you a zeal to work like John the Baptist. Uh, when we see the life of John the Baptist, uh, you know, there was a prophecy concerning him in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 3 to 5. It says, listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. And when we read Matthew chapter 3 verse 3, there we can see the fulfillment of this prophecy. It says uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 3, the prophet Isaiah was speaking of John when he said he is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. So it is something that, you know, that John the Baptist was not born for anything. He was born with a purpose. And same way that you and I, we are born with a purpose. We who believe in Jesus, we who claim to be his disciples. So, you know, I'm not using the word Christians because there is a lot of paganism going on in Christians. But to those who call themselves as true believers or those who say I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. So, you know, we have a plan. We have a God has a plan and purpose for each one of you out there. You may be thinking, what to, what is the plan? I don't understand. It's simple to know the will of God. Read the Bible. To do the will of God, do what is written in the Bible. That's it. You don't need to go and ask for the or to the prophets what's the will of God in my life. You already know within you when you're growing up that what you should be doing. Remember the desires God gives in your heart are from Him. And uh, if that desire is work, you work and use your work as a ministry towards the Lord. If it is a desire to, to do something for needy, for the widows, for the oppressed, do that, that is your calling. Simply you know it, but don't go here and there uh, like pagans, like, you know, let me tell me the God's will. You know, I remember that I think last week I met a, a couple of brothers, you know, and uh, their mother was ill. And when their mother was ill, one 
prophet of God, so called, I would say, uh, came to their house and uh, he said that, you know, he prophesied to his mother uh, that uh, you will live, you will see your, uh, uh, like, you know, her, your son's wife, you will see your grandchildren and like things like that, you know. And uh, but the recently she died and uh, the the boys you know they were like so much of uh, confused why when the prophet said it happened and i said it was not a prophecy it was it is called something as situational prophecy like you know you see someone struggling in pain or is sick you know you tell them that the better will happen but remember until and unless God tells that person, you know, if anybody say anything out of their mind, thinking, you know, that is something, it comes as a witchcraft. Because anything you say outside, anything you say outside from your brain, from your flesh, it's the spirit of witchcraft that is working in that person. That is, you need to be very careful when you think that, oh, I can say anything. You know, that's not the, the truth. When, when there is no Holy Spirit, that's the spirit of witchcraft working through you. You have to be super careful about it. But what I was very hurt in my spirit was to see those two sons, you know, hurt. And because of somebody's uh, negligence. And it was something that, you know, uh, the servants of God think that, you know, they can prophesy what they want, anything they want. They have no consequence. But remember the pain those sons were going, you know, God will take an account from that serv servant of God. He's uh, true or not. You know, that time has already revealed because remember, if a prophet of God says something and, you know, it will come to pass. You know, when you read the word of God, the prophets are prophesied, you know, it will be like uh, hundreds of years, 300 years later, 290 years later. So, you know, some prophecies will take uh, even a century for uh, for it to come to pass. When I said that uh, a time is coming, you know, when our country, India, can go back again in slavery. You know, when I have prophesied that in one of my, my videos, you know, I received a lot of messages that it's next to impossible. But uh, brother and sister, remember, for God... When he says something, you know, there is a, there is a purpose, you know, the, when we see something uh, that, you know, when somebody says uh, in our uh, human mind, we think it's not possible. But remember the God who speaks through his real prophets, you know, he knows the past, present and future. He already knows that what you're going to do tomorrow. He already knows how you're going to be, your end is going to be because he knows how everything is going to pan out the new heaven new earth everything he knows that that's why it's uh, i'm blessed to worship a living god who knows my past present and future and i have no fear in giving my life into his hands because he knows everything he's not a god of past he's not a god who is dead he's a god who made everything he's a living god he's a god of living and that's why we said he's a god of abraham isaac and jacob that means they are still alive maybe not in their flesh but the spirit is uh, keep on living but when we see the life of john the baptist you know remember that he was a nazarite when we read uh, Luke chapter 1 verses 15 uh, it says uh, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord he must never touch wine or other alcoholic drink he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth remember he was he's the one of the person you know in the word of God he was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, within the womb and that is something you know uh, beyond that is something you can cannot understand why but i believe that god has put that uh, that purpose inside him from his childhood and he knew throughout his life what the purpose he's going to was he was born to understand better you know when we read numbers chapter 6 verses 2 and 3 and later on you can read the remaining there you can see who is a nazarite you know it says give the following instruction to the people of israel if any of the people either men or women take the special vow of a Nazarite, setting themselves apart to the Lord in a special way. They must give up wine and other alcoholic drink. They must not use vinegar made from wine or other alcoholic drink. They must not drink fresh grape juice and they must not eat grapes and ra raisins. 
so here you can see that uh, Nazareth right, they have they couldn't do a lot of things they can't cut their hair and lot of things were there when you read numbers you will come to know but what is important is that here John the Baptist was a Nazarite and he 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 didn't had any uh, you know alcohol or anything related to wine or grapes uh, and that was the command of the Lord that not to do when you see the word of God you know we have so many things in our life when we know that you know we shouldn't be doing but still we do when you see the Old Testament uh, when God says not to do and you compare it with the uh, today what is happening you know it is happening when he says uh, not to do idol worship you see idol worship is uh, happening within the church you know I was seeing one video yesterday in which uh, uh, a pagan uh, a pagan uh, what you say a servant you know who is doing rituals in a temple you know he was uh, sharing how Christians uh, having idols within the churches he said that's what that was not there hundred years back but now if you go to a church who oppose idol worship you know the church is filled with idols uh, when Jesus said when God said not to make any image you know when it comes any image you don't make images of angels you don't make images of saints you don't make any image of any human you know that's what is happening but man is doing that whatever the law the god has said in the old testament not to do but people are doing yes we are under grace that will not impact our eternity but that's the rebellion within the man within humans that whatever god says not to do you know they will do you see the videos you see anything you know they the old testament says do not take the name of god in vain you know but when i see christians you know for everything for anything you know they are taking god's name in vain that's what uh, the human tendency is if god says not to do it uh, the flesh will make you do it that's why you have to be very careful that what you say and what you do that is something you know you have to be careful you study your life you read the 613 laws god gave and you will see out of that uh, so many like approx 70 to 80 percent of you have done in your life uh, but that is something uh, the, our flesh is all about it contains sin that's why we need the righteousness of god in our life and that is that comes in our life through christ jesus uh, so when we see the life uh, of john the baptist uh, the most important thing we came to come to know is that he lived for God, not for himself. Uh, remember when we see the life of Elijah in Second Kings chapter 1 verse 8, it says they replied, he was a hairy man and he wore a leather belt around his waist. Uh, Elijah from Tishbe, the king ex uh, exclaimed, uh, remember when we see the life of john the baptist uh, you know he left his parents and father's home to be uh, of the service of the lord when we read luke chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 it says it was now the 15th year of the reign of uh, tiberius uh, the roman emperor pontius pilate was governor over judea herod uh, antipas was ruler over galilee his brother philip was ruler over uh, ituria and Traconitus uh, uh, Lysanias was the ruler uh, over uh, Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas was the high priest. At this time, a message from God came to John, son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. Then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sin and turned to God to be forgiven. Remember, here you can see John the Baptist. You know, he is a person whose father is a high priest. When we read uh, the Old Testament, it's, it permits the consumption of locusts as food. When we read Leviticus chapter 11 verses 21 to 23, it says, uh, You may, however, eat winged insect that walk along the ground and have a jointed legs so that so they can jump the insects you are permitted to eat including all kind of locusts uh, uh, bald locust uh, 
crickets and grasshoppers all other winged insect that walk along the ground are detestable to you see when when we when we know that john the baptist was having locust and honey you know it was not easy just imagine a man who is eating locust and honey for approx 20 years or maybe more than that just imagine how his body would have been just he's eating the insects uh, but that also you need to know that it was been allowed in the in the law of god you know many times we think that because you are in the service of the lord you can do anything it is okay for you because you're doing god's work that is not when the word of god says no that is a no he could have enjoyed meat and bread uh, because that was been brought to the temple because his father was a high priest uh, but he he lived for God not for himself uh, and he he settled for less uh, for the sake of his calling for the ministry that is very very important beloved that when God calls you many times we try for much more than we are called to and unnecessary we spend on the things we don't have to when God bless you with the house you don't have to purchase three more to because just because you have but when God bless you with money it is because you can bless uh, others who doesn't have a house who doesn't have a car or do something for the kingdom of God uh, but remember to sow in a place where where people really need your uh, need your uh, uh, help that is very very important many people they use their money in a place where already millions and trillions are coming and that is the reason they are doing unnecessary projects uh, which is not within the will of God but what is important is that you prayerfully decide what to do way to do and how to do remember that uh, John the Baptist uh, settled for less uh, for the sake of ministry can you settle for less uh, for your calling and we read Luke chapter 1 verse 15 it says for he will be great uh, in the eyes of the Lord he must never touch wine or other alcoholic drink he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth uh, remember that, that he was there in God had to take him to the wilderness uh, to take care to secure his anointing he lived in a constant danger for the sake of God's kingdom but remember that is what it is called to be when you follow Jesus there will be a constant danger but without God's will nothing will come to pass uh, when we read Matthew chapter 16 verse 25 it says uh, if you try to hang uh, on onto your life you will lose it but if you give up your life for my sake uh, you will you will save it that's what about John the Baptist he never thought about his life uh, he never tried to save his life but uh, he was ready to give up his life uh, for God's work uh, that is very very important remember he was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and it is very important when you want to do work of God uh, your God will take you through isolation God will take you set you apart uh, alone he will prepare you remember when we see the life of John the Baptist he confronted sin with no regard to position and titles he does he didn't care whether he is speaking to a king or a layman but uh, he never compromised with the message of God that's what it is important that we need to do in our life that we need to be focused uh, on fulfilling the great commission we need to do what people ask us God ask us to do not what people ask us to do remember that is very very important if you want to be used by God if you want to live for God you should stop looking at people's face uh, and start looking at God's face that is very very important uh, the second thing we can learn from the life of John the Baptist was that uh, he never abused uh, God's anointing uh, remember he used the anointing that God gave him to draw people to God not for himself uh, when we see today's world uh, people are using the gift of God people are using the 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 gifts of the Holy Spirit to portray that they are better than others uh, the gift they have has been given by God but they are putting a price tag on those gifts uh, you give thousand bucks I will prophesy for you you give a uh, ten thousand i will speak one to one on phone remember these are all the sign of 
of uh, the spirit of uh, the antichrist that is working within the body of christ you cannot sell the gifts of god you cannot put a price tag on the gifts of god uh, you know when when i listen to uh, some people when they invite certain servants of god and when they say that they have asked us 3 lakh 4 lakh i say you need to boycott such servants of god so called servants of god i will never call them a servant of god who is asking money you know when they they go for the to preach the word of god if somebody is taking care of your tickets it's okay fine but if someone is not uh, you pray that god will open the way but you will never open your mouth uh, and make a burden upon them god has given you the gift he knows to take care i know people who take 8 lakh rupees 10 lakh rupees uh, for one day meeting or two day meeting remember i i fear on the day of judgment what they are going to answer but the more than that what what is upsetting is that people in the body of christ ready to pay that amount uh, just to show people that they have uh, invited a big preacher but remember god can work uh, work anyone's life god can use anyone uh, to do his will it is not someone with big name only can come in your city and bring a revival uh, but remember it is the spirit of god that brings revival if you ready to submit yourself if you say lord i want uh, to be, bring a change in my city use me and you set apart yourself like john the baptist god can use you in your city you don't have to invite anyone from anywhere to that uh, that is the reason when many times i get invitation i pray i know in my spirit that they are not calling me to be to change but they're calling to see what i say they just want they like they are like the people who who listen uh, prophecies for amusement uh, but they are not changed uh, within themselves it is very important uh, but we can see here john the baptist uh, he never abused uh, god's anointing when we see the life of uh, samson when we read jude chapter 14 verses 10 to 20 there we can see that uh, how samson abuse the gift that god has given him we should never be like samson we should be careful when i see the life of samson you know it i it really breaks my heart he could have achieved so much he, he could have done so much but he couldn't uh, keep his pants in control he was always ready to put his pants down anywhere any place uh, remember you cannot become a servant of god if you don't know to control your pants so uh, if you cannot become a, a woman of god a daughter of God if you cannot control your sexual desires uh, and you remember that is very very important uh, that is one sin that has destroyed many of many servants of God and if you see around the globe uh, you will come to know how it has destroyed still continue to destroy the servants of God uh, remember judgment comes uh, and starts within the house of God you need to prepare yourself uh, you need to control your uh, desires with within yourself and you need to ask God to help you and remember devil can only tempt you the more you allow him devil cannot tempt you at all but when you give a chance to him he will tempt you that is something to ponder over don't say that i cannot control devil is tempting me because you are opening a way for that devil is tempting you you are watching stuff sir which you shouldn't be but that's the reason devil is tempting you but remember if you have a lifestyle where you are in prayer you are in the word of god you are watching the stuffs that is biblical you're what seeing the stuff sir that is uh, not hampering you remember devil cannot tempt you but uh, if you think that devil is tempting you you cut yourself from all those stuff it is better to pluck out your eyes than uh, being blind and enter into the kingdom of god than having eyes you sin and uh, you you lose your soul that doesn't mean you take a knife and pluck your eyes that there is a spiritual understanding that you need uh, to stop doing things uh, that will take you to hell then you know enjoy it later find out you are in hell remember that uh, when we see the life of john the baptist uh, he was humble and did not hesitate to point to jesus as rightfully required by the prophetic uh, 
office that is something that when we read john chapter 3 matthew chapter 3 verse 14 it says but john tried to talk him out of it uh, i am the one who needs to be baptized by you he said so why are you coming to me uh, when you we see read john chapter 1 verses 26 to 29 it says uh, john told them i baptized with water but right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize uh, uh, though his ministry follows mine i am not even worthy to be his slave uh, and untie the straps of his sandals uh, this uh, encounter took place in bethany an area east of the jordan river where john was baptizing jesus the lamb of god the next day there we can see about jesus the next day john saw jesus coming towards him and said look the lamb of god who always takes away the sin of the world uh, remember here we can see that he never abused his calling he never used his uh, anointing to be set above jesus christ that i am the one or something but he was always ready to to humble himself uh, that made jesus increase and he decreased that was his attitude any servant of god who uses the word of God uh, to you know raise him up uh, to show that he is something better than Jesus uh, his name is been glorified you see the pulpit uh, when you see the pulpit who is been glorified is it the Jesus or is it the servant of God uh, that is that shows that what spirit of God is working whether it is the spirit of God or is it spirit of Antichrist uh, what is the meaning of Antichrist is not against Christ is it is the substitute for Christ Christ. So when any servant of God tries to take the place of Christ, when he says only I can deliver you, when he says only I can heal you, when he takes the place of Jesus Christ, that spirit of Antichrist is working in that servant of God. The third thing we can learn from the life of John the Baptist is that he always lived up to God's calling. That means uh, he was preparing the people for the arrival of, uh, of Messiah by introducing the baptism of repentance and urging the people to repent. Uh, when we read Luke chapter 3 verses 7 to 14, it says, uh, when the crowd... Uh, when the crowds came to john the Bap john for baptism he said you brood of snakes uh, you warned uh, who warned you to flee the coming wrath uh, prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sin and turned to god don't just say to each other we are safe or we are descendants of abraham that means nothing for i tell you god can create children of abraham from these very stones uh, for even now the axe of God's judgment is poised ready to to sever the roots uh, of the trees uh, yes every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire the crowds uh, uh, asked what should we do John replied if you have two shirts give one to the poor if you have food share it with those who are hungry even corrupt tax collectors came to be baptized and asked teacher what should we do he replied collect no more taxes than the government requires uh, what should we do ask some soldier he John replied don't exhort money or make false accusation and be content uh, with your pay you know the verse 14 it is something for people who are working now you're watching me are you content with your pay you know we always have a i have met so many people they will work in one place for six months they will get even 500 rupees more they will go and leave that to job for that and their their life is miserable you need to be content with what god gives you you need to live with what god need to learn to live with what god uh, has given you when you can be content in ten thousand rupees salary when God sees that he will increase you within that place uh, maybe he will ask you to go to another place but there will be peace uh, you are not just running for like a grasshopper hopping from this company to another company just for few bucks uh, that is very very important that you need to be learn to be content in your life uh, that what has God has given you because he will give you what you need uh, and if uh, I see 
people who are in government servants who are earning in one lakh one lakh fifty here in my city they are still in debts you know why because uh, they are abusing the the money god has given them remember one lakh one lakh fifty is it not uh, good enough to live one month and they are uh, asking for loans from the other people just imagine that god has blessed you so much but still you don't know to can be content uh, unnecessary loans unnecessary things uh, because your uh, neighbor has bought 72 inch tv you buy 72 inch tv why because you because you couldn't see the people in 32 inch tv am i right or wrong that's why these are all the 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 unnecessary things that you do and you come under loan and destroy the god's calling upon your life uh, when you abuse the, the the blessings God give you but what John the Baptist says if you have two should give one to who doesn't have if you have food give to the someone else uh, who is hungry and uh, that is what is important that is what shows the fruit of repentance uh, they, without that he wouldn't have baptized uh, what is happening in today's churches they will just baptize anyone they say I want to be baptized that's not the way to do it uh, beloved it is very very important that you know what you are doing what you are doing with the talents god has given you otherwise you will you will wake up one day you are not on this earth and you will be like ashamed of yourself the way you lived in this world it is okay to buy do things it is okay to purchase things what is necessary but unnecessary when you keep on purchasing things which you don't have remember there are people in the world who doesn't have even two pair of clothes but god has given you so much but you just want more and more and more that is something that uh, uh, remember spirit of gluttony you know all just want more and more to eat uh, just uh, that is something the spirit may be controlling you you need to come out of that uh, and you need to pray lord give me the heart for others who are in need that is very very important uh, the last thing we can learn from the life of john the baptist that uh, he finished his race well when we read the word of god we can see approx four type of people you know first is that people who started poorly and finished poorly when i when i was uh, going through this stuff uh, you know i was just uh, thinking that uh, i don't think there is anything the word of god doesn't uh, answer when you see the word of god when you allow the holy spirit he will he will open the word of god in a way you never thought of every issue that you go through in your life uh, you know there is an answer for you in the word of god and it was written over 2000 years before so it was something like you know some of the things wrote uh, 3005 years uh, before 5000 years before but still it can be applied in our life that's the beauty of the word of god that you cannot say it doesn't apply for this century even if the life gets worse uh, for next thousand years also the word of god will be same and can be applied for the people of that time but i'm so happy that i born in this season because i know the time coming coming now after some years or some decades is going to become worse and worse and worse uh, and i'm glad that god i am been born and people should be glad who are now in 60s and 70s your time was best uh, and if you're older than that that is much better sin had uh, very less hold on you but sin will increase like anything it is going to increase in a way that you never imagined uh, you it will a time is coming when you will think that you whether you should be going for a child or not because the time will become so bad uh, that uh, that the, the the body of christ they will also be scared of the things uh, they will be worried about their children and the sin will be creeping inside your house like anything and you will have no stoppage of it uh, now when you get uh, better internet connection so cheaply you will be thinking how much we are uh, improving but remember with technology the sin creeps within your life uh, and it will become in a way that you cannot be able to avoid sin anywhere but remember what is happening is that uh, the devil will use technology against you that doesn't mean you you delete your whatsapp account that doesn't mean you delete facebook and all remember you need to be wise to use technology for the betterment see my 
if uh, this my ministry which god gave me has increased so much it's all because of the media i still remember one servant of god uh, he was not a servant of god but he was doing personal evangelism and uh, not a, a servant of god in the sense uh, like on preaching on a pulpit in that context i have said uh, so but when he prayed he told me that god will give you a media ministry but that time i used to think that i don't have any sponsors i don't have any supporters i don't have uh, anything you know no studio nothing how will i ever do it uh, but later i understood what god gave in my hand was uh, a simple tripod with a phone and i'm using that for the kingdom of god and that's glory to god that you know that is something that god blessed me the the lights uh, the uh, which i'm using was uh, was been blessed to one sister in us she purchased because i don't get these things here in india i asked her that i will pay you but she said i want uh, just uh, to bless you with that she uh, blessed me with this uh, lights and everything whatever i have it's it's not something that uh, i got it it's uh, god has provided for me and uh, i am using my present situation i'm using my present time i'm doing this in my bedroom i'm making but it is reaching you that is all important i don't need all the flood lights and all those stuff the message is important uh, there was a time when uh, i was about to do something that i thought i will do some changes in my videos editing and all those stuff uh, but later the lord spoke to me he said to me son keep it simple because in simplicity i work better and that and then i repented of it i said lord i don't want any fancy or anything till you want me i i'm just happy with my mobile phone and the simple lights to share the word uh, but what is important is beloved be content in your life uh, when we see the life of john the baptist there we can see he finished his race uh, well as i said earlier in the bible we see the kind kind of people you know first uh, people who started poorly and finished poorly when we really read uh, luke chapter 23 verses 39 it says one of the criminals hanging beside us him scoffed uh, so you are the messiah are you prove it by saving yourself and us too while you are at it uh, this uh, thief when we see the life of thief uh, you know he started poorly in his life he destroyed his life uh, uh, stealing and the ending we can see also he finished poorly many of you may be watching you you have started your life uh, poorly you have made all the wrong choices you can ever imagine and still you are living in that uh, situation but that's not it you can still bring a change uh, to it the second type of people we can see they have started poorly but finished well when we read second timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and 8 we see the paul saying i have fought the good fight i have finished the race and i have remained faithful and now the prize awaits me the crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will give me on the day of his return and the prize is not just for me but all for all who eagerly look forward for his to his uh, appearing how many of you you can say before your time that uh, you have fought the good fight uh, and you have finished the race uh, and you have remained faithful that is very important beloved being faithful with what you have uh, if you have millions be faithful in millions if you have thousands be faithful in thousand if you have hundreds be faithful in hundreds uh, that is important it's not about the number it's not about uh, the quantity it is about uh, the quality the third we can see is the type of people who started well but finished poorly when we read first samuel chapter 31 verse 4 it says uh, saul groan groaned to his armor bearer take your sword and kill me before these pagan philistines come to run me through and taunt and torture me but his armor bearer was afraid and would not do it so saul took his own sword and fell on it there we can see a, a king 
who had the spirit of God, who was anointed by God, committing suicide. Uh, remember, that is something so, something to be ashamed of. Uh, someone who walked with the Lord, who heard, who saw that he was a normal person. God made him a king. He was able to see the miracles in his life, uh, but at the end, uh, committed suicide uh, so poorly. He started well, but finished poorly. Lastly, we can see people who started well and finished well. When we see Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 to 24, there we can see Enoch. It says when Enoch was uh, 65 years old, he became the father of uh, Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived uh, in close fellowship with God for another 300 years and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. Remember what a life, you know, he lived that God took him up and, you know, he lived 365 years. Uh, to be honest, uh, that is a very long year to live. Uh, if you ask me, I will never ask to live so long because uh, this life itself I have lived, it is so, so hurting, so painful, so much of stress. And I feel like, you know, as I always have a desire to meet my Lord as soon as possible. But I want to be faithful and I want to finish what God has asked me to do. Remember, John the Baptist finished his work uh, so early. Jesus finished his work early. But remember, the work he has given you, if you want, just finish it off. You can meet the Lord before. But what is important? Being faithful till your last breath. Uh, that is very, very important, beloved. Uh, but remember, John was a person who started well and finished well. And remember, when we read Luke chapter 7, verses 7 to 23, there we can see, you know, that uh, about his ending. But... Uh, that doesn't mean that John was perfect and did not have a single flaw. But remember, he had his fair share of doubts may, might be when some people say or some weakness. Uh, but remember, he worked on his character constantly. Why I'm taking this point is that many people, they say that uh, John the Baptist doubted Jesus. When we read Luke uh, uh, chapter Luke chapter 7 verses 17 to 23 it says the disciples of John the Baptist uh, told John about everything Jesus was doing so John called for two of his disciples and he sent them to the Lord to ask him are you the Messiah we have been expecting or should we look for someone else uh, John's uh, two disciples found Jesus and said to him John the Baptist sent us to ask are you the Messiah we have been expecting or should we keep looking for someone else uh, at that very time Jesus cured many people of the diseases illness and evil spirits uh, and he restored sight to many who were blind uh, then he told John's disciple go back to John and tell him what you have seen and heard the blind see the lame walk those who those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead were raised to life and uh, the good news is being preached to the poor and he added God bless those who do not fall away because of me. There, uh, when we see this many times, uh, uh, you know, we come to a conclusion. Many people, you know, normal believers also think that uh, that uh, John the Baptist was uh, uh, was uh, you know he was confused. He was doubting Jesus. Uh, but remember that John the Baptist was already leading people to Jesus uh, when he was in his uh, mother's womb. You know, when we see Luke chapter one verse forty four, there we can see that uh, John leaped for joy in Elizabeth's womb uh, as the pregnant Mary approached uh, you know that is something you know elizabeth could make out uh, that you know there is a purpose uh, when we read john chapter 1 verses uh, 32 to 34 it says john later said i saw the spirit come down like a dove from the sky and remained upon him i did not know him but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me on whomever you see the spirit come down and remain he is the one 
who will be baptized with the holy spirit and now i have seen and testified that he is the son of god here you can know that john the baptist know who jesus was i cannot uh, uh, you know have come to a conclusion that john didn't know jesus because they were cousins uh, and in the spirit he knew that what uh, who jesus was uh, remember when we read john chapter 1 verse 36 uh, with there we can see that after john described jesus as the lamb of god andrew and another disciple left john to follow jesus there also we can see that you know john was not uh, did not stop him from going to jesus because his main purpose was uh, bringing people to christ uh, so was john having doubts about uh, who jesus was i don't think so remember uh, john was probably not having doubts but rather was preparing his disciples for the person whom they should follow after his own death uh, remember that uh, jesus was not uh, the messiah that people expected him to be but he was all because he was always concerned uh, of fulfilling the great commission people expected him to march and fight for them but jesus was not there for that purpose uh, another better explanation might be because john when we read john 330 here the john had to be decreased uh, and jesus had to increase uh, and uh, what is the best way to leave your disciples uh, uh is to you know connect them with jesus uh, and ask him is he the messiah in other words uh, you know john was sending his disciples to jesus with that questions uh, because he wanted them to see from their eyes uh, so that they can begin to follow him and he can wean them off of himself uh, and they would realize what jesus was uh, actually who he was and uh, whom he they had to follow so that is very simple but many time uh, we are confused about it but we shouldn't be because remember the spirit of god was in john and he knew that uh, jesus was the son of god but in that uh, particular occasion remember that john was uh, preparing his disciples uh, to be connected with jesus uh, so because uh, because john knew that his death is very near remember john lived so well he finished his race so well that jesus spoke very highly of him and we read matthew chapter 11 verse 11 it says i tell you the truth of all who have ever lived none is greater than john the baptist jesus spoke highly of him when you meet jesus will he speak highly of you will you be able to hear that come my faithful servant enter into the rest or will he say that depart from me i do not know you that is my question to you beloved that will you be able to to finish your finish off well that is very very important uh, to finish the race well uh, not go after the 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 things of this world we need to be in the world uh, but but we shouldn't go inside the world just like a ship uh, is on the water but as long as it is on the water the people are safe but when the ships goes inside the water the people perish you should be over the situation and whatever situation you should be you need to you need to learn to say i'm doing well over the situation when you do that uh, you know there is you will see that god working in your life uh, i believe this message has blessed you and it will help you to 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 ask the holy spirit to show you that where you are doing sins uh, and mistakes so that you can repair your life uh, and you can start doing bringing change in your life in a smaller way in a bigger way the way god has blessed you and because one day you are answerable to god and remember you should be able to say like uh, like paul that i have finished the race well i have remained faithful that is what is important beloved on your death bed this is something uh, you know that is scary that one day you all will die even i will die but you know on that uh, bed on which you're lying um some may some may have sudden death some may have uh, expecting that they're going to die soon but when you're lying on that bed knowing that you are going to die 
you know you shouldn't be scared of it uh, but you need to have that confident like paul that i have finished my race that confidence of fulfilling the purpose god has called you to be that is not no greater joy than that uh, and because you have invested beyond your graves uh, you have done some things for the kingdom of god he has asked you to do remember we cannot save the world we cannot save millions uh, there are people who are called to do that but uh, many are called to save the hundreds but are you faithful in hundreds are you faithful to win even tens uh, that is important uh, be focused in fulfilling your destiny beloved do not focus on the earthly things uh, we have to live in the world we have to do certain things uh, but remember don't be so much focused on the world that you do forget to live for god that is very very important do not abuse the anointing god gives you be faithful live for him and finish the race well let us pray father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to the throne of praise i give your children into thy hand their lives into thy hands master no work of the devil no work of the evil one prevail upon their life master lord i give their uh, their future into thy hand master i give their prayer request into thy hand master everybody struggling in their marital life i give them into thy hands master i speak a breakthrough upon their marriages in the name of jesus all the work of the devil all the work of the evil one are Again, working against their marriage i cancel it i destroy it in the name of jesus i decree and declare restoration of god upon their marriages in the name of jesus uh, every fights uh, taking place in their marriages uh, every work of the devil working in their marriage master every wrong connections wrong people brought by devil be destroyed in the name of jesus be destroyed in the name of jesus uh, lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you the spirit of the lord is uh, reminding me about 911 uh, and an a terrorist attack like 911 is going to take place in this world that where people will be shocked uh, in a way that uh, they have never dreamt about that something would like this can happen worse than 911 and you need to pay pray people of god that uh, that these things should not come to pass uh, and uh, the plans of the devil should perish uh, the plan of wicked should perish the plan of the evil one should perish uh, lord i cancel that uh, terrorist attack in the name of jesus we as a body of christ we pray against it martyr master let alone your name prevail in every area of our lives master no souls be per- able to perish master may everyone come to repentance uh, and come to uh, know you that you are the living god master lord you're doing it for that i thank you master no plan of the devil prevail in their life master i decree and declare miracle jobs upon their life in the name of jesus everyone praying for the jobs master give the uh, give them good salary job steady job according to their will according to your will that they and according to their needs master lord you're doing it for that i thank you master everybody master going through sickness master i speak complete healing deliverance uh, and restoration upon their body i curse that spirit of sickness uh, commanded in the name of jesus to leave their life right now in the name of jesus there's a person you have an issue on your life left eye and there is a, a blindness uh, 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 sort of uh, and you are not able to see properly the spirit of the lord is uh, telling me that he is healing you right now right now lord in the name of jesus i curse the spirit of blindness that pain in the eye the constant pain in the eye i curse it i command it in the name of jesus to leave their lives right now in the name of jesus i speak complete healing upon those eyes master may that blindness be gone and that blurredness be gone in the name of jesus lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you no plan of the devil prevail upon their life master deliver them from the evil one master give them the burden for the losing soul master give them the desire to and hunger for the things of god master all the wrong connections and wrong people be removed from their life in the name of jesus so lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you i give your children into the hand i curse that uh, spirit of post 
rejected cancer i curse it in the name of jesus command it in the name of jesus to live their lives right now in the name of jesus no work of the devil no work of the evil one prevail lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you you increase we decrease through our lives let alone your name be glorified help us to become a person you desire us to be through our life through our character christ be seen that i curse the spirit of arthritis command it in the name of jesus to leave their bodies right now in the name of jesus i speak strength to the bones i speak creative miracles upon their life master i speak that the knee injured knee be healed the pain in the knees be healed in the name of jesus i speak new new kidneys upon their life in the name of jesus fresh new kidneys upon their life in the name of jesus i curse the spirit of heart issues be removed from their life in the name of jesus lord you're doing it for that i thank you lord you're doing it for that i thank you i cancel the debts upon their life in the name of jesus every unnecessary debts brought by devil be waved off be removed from their life in the name of jesus lord you're doing it for that i thank you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 i believe this message has blessed you if this message has blessed you see to it that you share it with your friends and loved ones and uh, if you haven't downloaded my app yet i know many of you haven't do download my app app name is evans francis and because there are a lot of stuffs i share there which i don't share uh in the videos there are blogs that i share that i don't share on the videos so so do download my app and if the lord leads you become a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud of our small ministry and uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel do subscribe hit the bell icon because it's free you can subscribe you don't have to pay anything to subscribe hit the bell icon so whenever i come live you will be notified may god bless you may his face shine upon you keep smiling Shalom